this $900 stimulus proposal compare to what was passed back in the early stages of the pandemic in March? Look, it's smaller and much more tailored, um, broken up into three major components, uh, about $750 billion for the private sector, including additional PPP loans and uh, unemployment insurance uh, 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 um, uh, benefits and money for transportation companies about $160 billion for state and local uh, governments. And then importantly, uh, a third component, which would be liability protection for, for universities and for uh, companies around the country. I know, Chris, it, it, those were two of the most contentious issues that has have held up the negotiations. That's um, money for state and local governments and liability protections for businesses. I mean, what do the the what 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 is the Democrat strategy here? They've obviously got the prospect now of Joe Biden entering the White House in January. Is it in their interest to forego their desires on those fronts now in hopes of getting those things passed in the future? Look, I can assume that the incoming Biden administration wants to have a healthy economy. And the way that Congress works, it's it's a, such a weird process. But if they can't get a deal by the end of this weekend, they have to wait until nearly February uh, for would be their next opportunity to be able to pass something. And so that's a month and a half in the dead of winter, uh, which many states are now forced to close a lot of small businesses. You'd see another raft of, of a small businesses closing and the economy is really struggling. Uh, so and you know right through the holidays and so really no one wants to see that happen um, and as you as you mentioned uh, you know most of this what's propelling this is that the government has to remain funded and so Congress is actually racing right now to, to pass the funding package uh, which the stimulus package uh, this the COVID st stimulus package actually will, will take a ride along with Assuming uh, the Georgia runoff in January actually does uh, yield uh, Republicans, so, so, so the Senate still ends up uh, leaning Republican and we still end up with a split Congress, what does this stimulus experience tell us about the future of how negotiations are going to take place between the Democrats and the Republicans here? It hasn't been easy to get to this point and these are all obviously very pressing circumstances as well. Do you see any optimism or, or positive signs for the future that m we can see more and more types of bipartisan bills being passed through Congress or is this just going to be a one-time exceptional thing only given the nature of the pandemic and the crisis that's come along with it? Well, Ken, it's a little bit early to tell that. I mean, uh, President-elect Biden, then President Biden um, next year, would, you know, will set the tone. Um, and that tone is very, very important. Uh, you know, he's, he was a senator for a very long time, has a lot of deep relationships still still in the chamber, uh, the U.S. US Senate. So I think that, you know, he would call upon those friendships. But the, um, you know, the pol politics does always do overtakes. Um, but there, again, the reality is that there are a lot of things that have to happen for the American people. Transfer a big infrastructure package, uh, perhaps some things that are on the edges on taxes and on things that could get done next year. Um, but it's just really a, a, the tone and tenor of the president uh, and president-elect. Um, and then, you know, what, what, what's, what's compelling for the for you know, constituents around the country? There's a, you know, we have uh, a lot of a lot of needs. Again, it's transportation uh, needs to be funded, and and there's again, there's a lot, a variety of things that they could be done. Um, you know, healthcare and other issues that really perhaps could, um, at least if we don't get to do something big, you could do something around the edges. And how do you see this evolving within the Democratic Party itself? Because the left are becoming increasingly more outspoken. Uh, Bernie Sanders is insisting on having direct payments included in the stimulus bill that's passed. And we've even heard from AOC in the last couple of days suggesting that it may be time for some of the uh, leadership within Congress to be changed. Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi. Uh, how do you see this all playing out? And, and do you think that the left are... Uh, increasingly going to be a thorn in Joe, Joe Biden's side once he takes office in January. Look, I, I'm I'm very I'm very happy that uh, I'm not the president of the United States. That he has a very difficult incoming job. Um, but and uh, look, I, clearly there's a lot of challenges that are that are happening within the Democratic Party, as is, as happened in the Republican Party in 2010, 11, 10, 10 uh, through 16. Um, so the, you know, the Democratic Party is going to have to uh, find its soul and try to find a way to you know cut, bring all of the factions together. Um, I think you know that. Really, that burden will fall upon uh, President-elect Biden and uh, then again President Biden next year um, to bring those factions together. But you're right; there is significant challenges that are uh, under that are underway 
from the progressive left in the Democratic Party in the United States, um, and which may have some may, which may possess may pose some challenges for Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer as they navigate. Um, you know, they're very difficult and, and a divided, perhaps divided government in Washington.